All right. So uh, welcome to this webinar about hiring international tech talent. I'm Ilya from Manhack. Oh, and we had someone else just join us. Uh, hi, hi there. Um, Becca, <laughs> good to see you here. How are you doing? Um, good, I'm a HR and communications coordinator, Lamas in Victoria. Yes, yes, yeah, that's great. It's great, great to have you here. And um, you, I guess you and I are chatting a little bit later too, right? <laughs> yeah, and uh, we are always struggling with finding um, qualified professionals here and um, reaching out. We get a lot of applicants from different countries, so it's good to just know the fastest way to get them here. Yeah, definitely. Well, well, we'll be going over all that. Um, so I was just chatting with, with Valerie that uh, uh, since it's just the three of us uh, on, the, on the webinar, um, you know, we, I'll go through this presentation and, uh, of course, feel free to ask any questions and let's just, let's just chat about it. Um, this is also being recorded, uh, so uh, we, we can put it on our website and our blog afterwards. But, uh, yeah, feel free to stop me anytime, ask questions. I'm sure, uh, you know, you guys know more about what you need than I do. So yeah, uh, let's dive into it. And uh, yeah, so this is, uh, we actually have this, this resource. It's a free ebook that we have on our website, uh, just vanhack.com slash employers. Uh, we found that there really wasn't any good um, information about the LMIA process um, online. Uh, there was a lot of like kind of scattered blog posts, but not one definite resource. And people kept asking us about it. So we created this, this, this guide, which I'll go over now. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, it, it really is a, a process that can trip up people and, and, uh, we always recommend getting someone help out with it, even though, um, you know, it, it is possible to do by yourself, but I think that having a qualified immigration professional is, is important. So, um, this is kind of a guide, but I, I always you know, re recommend someone, uh, someone else to help because, it, it is, it is a, like a, a process where if you don't do it right, don't fill out a specific form the right way, uh, it could get rejected and, and that'll lead to months more of waiting. So yeah, uh, it's kind of a caveat before getting started. So uh, let's get into it. Cool. So first we'll talk about the LMIA in general and then we'll step by step and then we'll talk about some successful or, or tips for success. Uh, and then at the end, of course, if there's any questions about Van Hack, we can go through that as well. Um, so basically, the LMIA, uh, the goal of the LMIA for, for the government is to show that there's no other person that's just as qualified as the candidate you want to bring in from abroad that's currently in Canada. So really, it's a way for you to prove to the government that the person you're going to hire um, is the best qualified person that, that's applied to the job. Um, and, and that's just, you know, a, a way for them to, to protect the labor market uh, in, in, in Canada right now. Um, so. Yeah, uh, basically the, the government wants to know these, these seven things. Um, so they really want to know and make sure that the salary that you're offering to this candidate is not lower than uh, market rate. So if it has to be uh, average or higher uh, for, for, you know, for mark, whatever market rate is, um, you have to make sure that the working conditions uh, you know, are consistent with labor laws and all that kind of stuff. So you're not bringing in people who are going to work in sweatshops, that kind of thing. Um, you know, is also making sure that there's an actual labor shortage. So you actually have uh, to show that there is some kind of need in terms of uh, not enough talent in, in the market, like, like you just said, Becca, which we, we, we all know there is, but they want to make sure that, you know, prove that there is. Um, and then you want to make sure that it's an ongoing uh, shortage. Um, and then you also really want to make sure, prove, and this is a, a really important part, is that you want to, you have to prove that you've, you've taken the steps, you've, you've done the things necessary, to try and recruit locally, uh, you can't uh, just you know throw throw up a job board and then two or sorry job job posting and then two days later say hey we tried. Uh, you actually have to have it up uh, for four months and it has to be on um, both national as well as local job boards and the Canadian Job Bank. We'll get into more details about that. Um, and then I guess the next thing is that they ha you have to prove that they have these unique skills. So in case of developers, which is really what we're, we're talking about here, hiring software engineers. Um, this is not so difficult to, to, to prove that, you know, this person maybe has uh, worked with Java for 10 years, et cetera, um, and, and they're qualified for the role. Um, and this could sometimes get tricky if they don't have a diploma in that area, but most of the time they do, so it's fine. 
And then um, this part is really important too, creating a transition plan um, or really showing that this person you're bringing on is actually going to be creating jobs for other Canadians. Um, potentially, uh, the most common case we've seen is there's a senior developer coming in that's going to allow you to work on a new project, which will open up a junior role or two. Uh, so that's really what, what they're looking to do and, and what they're looking for you to prove to them when they're considering your application. Um, so yeah, generally speaking, um, if it's for a more centralized city, uh, for example, Toronto, Vancouver, um, they really want someone with, um, with uh, stronger skills. Uh, but thankfully for your guys' case in Victoria, um, smaller regions or less populated cities, um, are, it's actually easier to get LMIAs because uh, the government realizes that there are um, less candidates in those areas. Um, so basically, uh, you know, you have to go through a two-step process. First, you have to go to ESDC, which is uh, Services Canada. Um, and then after that, uh, you have to get, um, you know, uh, approval for CIC, or I guess now it's IRCC. Uh, they changed the name recently uh, to get an actual work permit. So we'll go through how that works. Uh, so the first step is to post the job for four, uh, four weeks. So you have to... Um, have the job, as I mentioned, at, um, and at least, uh, you know, two uh, recruitment methods and, and so two other job boards. So, for example, Indeed or BC Jobs, I think would be good cases, or maybe the, the YY, um, the, the SendGrid, uh, sorry, Send With Us uh, GitHub group that I know is a community group uh, that uh, Send With Us does uh, on, on GitHub. Uh, I, I'm not sure if actually that qualifies for them because uh, it's such a specific one, but I think like something like a BC Jobs uh, would qualify as well as Indeed.ca or Monster or kind of one of the more na national ones. And then of course you also have, this is something that tricks people, uh, people all the time, have to have the job posted on the Canadian Job Bank website. So um, another thing that with this is that the job posting has to have certain criteria. Uh, for example, it has to have the salary range uh, in the job posting and um, has to really show the person's skills um, very, very clearly. And uh, we can, I can share, share uh, some, some examples of job postings with you guys after. Um, another question that we get all the time is how long does it take? Um, so this is something that there's really no right answer. Um, I, I've seen it take up to six months, unfortunately, in some cases. Um, but it, it could also vary. Uh, for example, if someone speaks French, uh, there's actually an LMI exemption for Francophones right now under the Francophone Mobility Program. So if you have a developer from outside of Canada who speaks French, you kind of have found a diamond in the rough because you can then bring them in uh, without an LMI. Um, so, yeah, uh, I would say 8 to 12 weeks is a good kind of, you know, more or less. But, um, and you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of variations on that. So uh, I would say maybe 3 to 6 months uh, to, to be safe. And of course, the person can start working for you remotely, which is you know, the good thing about developers and designers. It's not like they're uh, um, you know, lawyers. They, they, they don't, uh, don't have to be there in person. So um, that, that is something we've seen a lot of times in our, in our cases where candidates start working remotely for companies. Uh, so uh, there is a fee, and it's not too high. Uh, it's $1,000, um, and then $155, not $1.55, $155 um, Canadian. Uh, fee for processing. Um, so, and that's a, a, unfortunately a fee that, um, that is non-refundable. So even if you get your LMIA uh, denied, you still have to pay that fee. Um, another thing you have to do is you have to create a transition plan, uh, as I mentioned. So this is really, re this is required, you know, for, for high wage oc occupations where, you know, I, I would think that that's uh, for our cases is, is definitely um, you know, developers would, would fall under that category. Um, and, and you have to show there that uh, you are working to create jobs for Canadians. Um, and, and you have to show, you know, you know, maybe different training programs you've created in the company, um, show how this job will open new, new jobs, uh, so it's higher will open new jobs for the company. Uh, and it's something that uh, you have to show uh, for an inspection um, if, they, if they ask you for inspection. So this part is, is really important and, and something that sometimes is, is missed. Uh, during the LMA application. Um, so let's go through the step-by-step. -step. Um, so uh, three job ads, as we mentioned before, for a minimum of four, uh, four weeks. Um, and you know, websites 
um, can't be too similar. They have to be different. Um, so if you use like Kijiji and Monster, which are basically the same thing, uh, that's only one. So you have to have something like, I would say like an Indeed and a BC Jobs or something like that, something that are, that are different enough. Um, and, and of course, also the, the Government of Canada Jobs Bank. Um, so you have to prove recruitment efforts. So you have to show all the people that apply to the position. It can't just be the one person that applied to the job. It has to be you know, a significant amount. And there's no real guidelines about that. But uh, just, just show that other Canadians have applied to the job. That's important. Um, and then you apply for the LMA after you, you've done those things. So you post the job. You've, you've captured the applicants. Now you can start applying for four weeks. Now you can start applying for the LMA. So one good trick I always say to people is have, I think, uh, Valerie, you're doing that right now, right? You have the job posting open all the time and you're always collecting leads there for people that, that might be a good fit. And so let's say you get 10 junior developers who apply from Canada and one senior developer that applies from abroad. You can say, hey, listen, we had this job open for, you know, last four weeks, six weeks, et cetera. Um, and, uh, you know, these were the applicants that applied. Um, and then you actually can just start the LMA right away because you've already had the job open for more than four weeks. So in your case, I think you're doing the right thing. Um, just one thing you, you have to be careful is that job postings have to be compliant with the type of job postings that the government wants. Um, then you wait. <laughs> this is the uncertain part. Uh, you know, as always, uh, when dealing with the government, things can get a little bit uh, um, uh, you know, long. Uh, so this is where it takes up to five months, uh, sorry, four months or more maybe. Uh, and, and this is uh, kind of something where no one really is able to, to, have to do anything about it's just in the hands of the government at this point. Um, so once you uh, get the LMA approved, um, then you have to give that to the employee and then the employee uh, applies to CIC, right? So um, that, you know, for, for a temporary job offer, which is most the case for everybody here, uh, you know, you should uh, give, give them uh, the, uh, the LMIA, and then this is where they can use that to apply for express entry. Um, and, and from there, they can come, come into the country and work, uh, work with their work visa. Uh, and that's it. And then you have uh, the LMIA uh, and the person in, 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 in town. Um, so uh, we'll just quickly finish off here with some, some tips uh, for you guys to remember. And then we can go to Q&A. Uh, so remember, you always have to be doing activities to recruit, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, that's really important. Uh, don't just meet the minimum, um, do as much as possible to show them what you're doing. So don't just post the jobs, maybe hold a, a open house or go to career fairs. And if you're doing that already, then fantastic, but make sure you're, you're doing a lot. Uh, just, you want to make sure that they have no doubt in their minds that this really is the best possible person for the job. Um, you know, use numbers, uh, to show. So you have to have measure, measure, uh, measures, uh, measurable numbers, metrics, X amount of applicants, X amount of uh, days posted in the jobs, X amount of sites, um, just, just have as much data as possible. Um, you know, all activities cost money, uh, so make sure that you are able to demonstrate this, um, how much you've invested, and, and that could be a, a, a good argument where, um, you know, if something goes wrong, you can say, listen, this is how much money I invested, I have all the proof. Um, and, um, you know, make sure you have uh, as, as much planning as, as you possibly can to, to before before you apply um, okay cool so the next uh, one is have a copy uh, of the application ready so if you have uh, one thing that will happen is um, they're gonna call you uh, during like when between the processing time you'll, you'll receive a call from services Canada so make sure you have a copy um, that uh, of, of the entire application in front of you during that call so you can refer to it if there's any specific line item they might ask you about um, have that there and then um, and it's really it's really important. So number seven uh, as I mentioned before make sure you um, meet all the uh, job criteria uh, that Service Canada requires um, So don't don't just post the job make sure the job is posted in the right way um, So that's something that could be tricky um, and make sure yeah the job postings are live They don't go uh, offline for any amount of time uh, because that that might be a problem. They might um, find out somehow. I'm not sure how but they might find out uh, Number nine. I think it's my favorite one. Don't be afraid <laughs> uh, Of the LMIA um, It's something that I think is a major turnoff for a lot of companies uh, on unfairly um, And I have had I have heard that the LMIA will get either smoother or will be uh, Have an exemption for tech talent soon. So hopefully that that's as a thing that we're, we're waiting to see in November from Minister McCallum, but um, you know, don't, don't, 
don't make it such a, a big problem um, that it, it, it stops you from, from hiring the best possible person for your, for your opportunity. Um, wages is really important, so make sure you're, fa you're paying a fair wage. Um, and uh, that's based on the not codes. Um, we have a wage guide uh, that isn't here actually, but I, I can send you a link for that um, so you can see. Um, yeah, so make sure that the ad and the L LMIA application match. This is really important too. So the job ad that you have and the uh, types of skills you put in the LMIA application, they have to match. Um, again, be prepared for the detailed telephone interview uh, that actually takes up to about one and a half hours. Um, so yeah, that, that is a lot of time. Um, be friendly and nice to Services Canada. Yeah, always be nice to the government. I think that's a good tip. Um, yeah, I, I would, that's a, this is a, a good tip as well. Have a cover letter when you're sending the application. So just kind of explain to the Services Canada, this is what we're trying to do, this is who we are, this is the company, et cetera. And, you know, just like a cover letter where an applicant sends you, it gives you a chance to give more detail and flavor um, than just you know, filling out the form that, from the government. Um, yeah, so keeping a current foreign worker, um, you know, that's not, have, doesn't have an LMIA, um, is, is not, is not, um, no, it's not something, it's, sorry, keeping a current foreign worker because an employer likes him, the worker is ready, is already trained within the company, is not a valid reason to apply for the LMIA. Yeah, so, um, you, you, if you have a, a foreign worker that is working with you, um, and, you, uh, how can I say this? Let's say he has a, or she has a work visa um, from something else before, uh, and you have to apply to an LMA for them uh, to, for example, um, keep keep that like their their work visa is about to run out, and you need to keep them extended. Um, you can't just automatically apply for the work visa for that person, even though they've been employed for you. You have to go through this process of, a, of showing that that person, in fact, is the best person for the job. Most of the time, that's not too complicated since he already or she is already working with you. So it's, it's pretty much a done deal. Um, but, you know, you just keep that in mind that it's not automatic and you have to be careful with the entire application. Um, yeah, and I guess the last one is be attention to detail. You have to follow it precisely as, like, as with anything in the government. Um, you know, they expect 100% uh, perfect application, um, you know, which is... Uh, good and bad, I guess. Um, but uh, you know, be, be prepared for um, you know for for the government to to be very thorough in the review of this and um, make sure you're doing it 100. percent That's why we always recommend uh, immigration uh, consultant to help with this because it it can you know be a, a big time and money uh, you know waste if it doesn't go through. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess we don't really have to talk too much about why hire event hack talent uh, right now, but. Uh, let's let's go into um, any um, any questions you guys might have and just chat about the the process. Uh, I don't really have any questions. It seems pretty straightforward. The um, the book seems awesome. I'll probably be downloading that immediately afterwards. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I think. Um, I really don't have any questions. <laughs> cool, cool. It's very informative. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. great to hear. Um, yeah, I, uh, I know it's something that is, you know, uh, a new subject for a lot of people and uh, yeah, try to do my best to explain. So awesome. Oh, cool. actually good question. Um, so is there any particular reason why salaries and need to be posted like on online forums, like if posting on indeed or, or whatnot? Yeah, it doesn't have to be the exact salary from what I am aware. Like what I, th I think that you don't have to put like exactly $80,000, but I think mm -hmm. you should put like a range um, mm. I think that's just so you can prove to the government that this is a market range uh, job. So like the person, okay. I think they're, they're, they're just very weary of people bringing in cheap labor from abroad, which uh, is both like a problem because of, I mean, of course, not that that really is what happens in the tech world, but I think in like fishing industry and maybe like mining or agriculture, um, bringing in like low skilled, uh, cheaper labor can be an issue and probably has been in the past. So that's probably why they're sensitive about that. Um, if, if that's just a guess though. I'm not 100% sure. 
Uh, and I do think you can just put a range. So like the salary range is between, you know, 80 and hundred K or something like that, or I'm not sure. but cool. I think that that makes it easier. So then you can kind of negotiate with each candidate, of course. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time to uh, host this webinar, Ilya. It was very uh, informative. Uh, I'm also going to download the ebook immediately. Um, I do have one question um, in regards to having the person start working remotely for the mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that's common practice, and it's also common practice to have short term contracts with remote developers uh, for specific projects. Um, I was just wondering, uh, how does that fit legally? Um, yeah. Is it a gray line? Um, how, how, does it, how does the government look at that? Yeah, great question. Um, so if they're in Canada, it's illegal. But if they're outside of Canada, let's say they're in Africa or Australia or the United States, um, they could be, you know, at the border of uh, Canada in uh, what was the city uh, by the border? I forget now. Um, oh, Bellingham, Washington, um, just as an example, right? Uh, and, and they are not working uh, in Canada, then it's legal. Uh, just like, you know, hiring someone from Upwork or, you know, uh, those freelance websites. Um, I've actually, it's, it's, it's actually kind of funny. We've had one of our members, a senior Ruby on Rails developer, moved to Vancouver, is working for TopTal, uh, which is the, I'm sure you've heard of it, the you know, high-end freelance um, network. And uh, they, uh, he was working for an American company uh, in Vancouver. And uh, so he was working remotely for, for a U.S. company, didn't need an American work visa for that. And then he got a job at a Vancouver company and he couldn't start work until uh, he got the LMA going. So it was just so funny because he, he's building the American economy and paying, you know, building a company, helping a company in America grow. And he has to go through all this process here to, to be uh, hired in, in Canada. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons why uh, there will be changes. Uh, I, at least I suspect there will be changes in November. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, to, you know, to answer your point directly, it's not a problem at all if the person's not in Canada. Um, it's just like hiring any person off of Odesk or any other freelancer uh, uh, website. Great, thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, yeah, but make sure they are actually are not in, in Canada. That's, that, 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 that sometimes, or um, that, that is definitely uh, an issue. Um, and something I, I, I've seen, like people tell me, oh yeah, I'm working remotely for a company within Canada, I don't have a work visa, so okay, cool. get your work visa as soon as possible, or just like stop it or something, because it, 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 that's a problem. Um, because it, it, yeah, um, it's kind of impossible for anyone to track, but it's definitely not something we even want to be doing. Hello, we have a, a new, uh, hi, uh, I'm guessing Madison uh, or Mads. Uh, welcome. Uh, oh, and she's gone. <laughs> Maybe she'll be reconnecting soon. Um, so we'll, we'll wait for a couple more minutes for her. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess, um, Valerie, this will be my uh, time to do a quick uh, shameless pitch for you. Um, cool. <laughs> so we are having a virtual hackathon coming up uh, where our talent, um, we have a database of uh, over 40,000 people and about 1,000 of them will be coming together to do a virtual hackathon, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. Um, okay. And we have companies like uh, Hootsuite, Shopify, Thalmic Labs participating, as well as about seven or eight other uh, mid-sized to you know, smaller startups that are looking to hire developers and designers. Um, and you just need to submit a coding challenge to participate. Um, and that would just be like something, I'm, I'm not sure a text stack you use, but uh, Shopify, for example, their, their, their coding challenges build us the future of commerce app um, or something like that. Uh, we have someone who's looking to build a Slack bot for doing the hackathon um, and, and seeing which person or team is able to, to do that and then uh, either you know, hiring them or actually buying the project. So, yeah, um, that's going to be happening again on the 21st and 23rd, and uh, we'd love to have you guys participate. Well, I can let the dev team know. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's just vanhack.com slash hackathon. It has all the information there. Cool. Thank you.
Yeah, yeah, no problem. And uh, we, we do work as a recruitment agency, so we, we uh, do have a 15% placement rate. Um, and we offer a 90-day guarantee on that, uh, just like industry standard, um, and where you refund or replace the, the talent for you. Uh, so, yeah, that's the way we work. Awesome. So vanhack.com slash hackathon? Yep, yeah, that has all the information. It's called the Van Hackathon. The Van Hackathon. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. All so. Right. It looks like um, Mads uh, or, or Mandy or, um, is not going to be uh, joining us, so maybe I'll email her in, uh, afterwards. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I think that there's more questions. Uh, we can wrap it up. I don't want to take up too much of, of your time. Uh, but I uh, really appreciate both of you taking some time and chatting about, uh, about this. Thank you. I really appreciate the, uh, the useful information. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, Valerie. And Echo, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers. Take care.